Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I have this Nintendo Switch OLED system that doesn't want to power on. In order to fix it, I need to take it apart, so what I'm going to do is do this in two parts. First the teardown of the console, and then hopefully the fixing of the console. If you want to watch the teardown, just keep watching this video, and if you want to watch the fix, I'll link it here in the top corner once it's ready. Now let's get started. And before anyone asks, I did leave it plugged in overnight just to make sure it wasn't that the battery was completely d dead. And still, there's no life in the system. Alright, now I'll put on screen the screw bits you'll need for this teardown. On the outside, there are two Phillips head screws on the bottom of the switch and one Phillips head on the top that we need to remove. There are three screws holding the Joy-Con rails in place. Just note that the upper screw is slightly different than the other two, so you want to keep track of that when you're tearing this down. And underneath the kickstand are two Y-shaped screws. Don't ask me why they decide the outer screws are fine to be Phillips, but once you get further into the system, they want to use different shaped screws just to make it more difficult. I, I don't understand that other than just they like to make it a pain to open these things up. But with those screws removed, you can pop off the black plastic cover. I use a little plastic spudger to not damage the case. You could probably get away with a credit card or something like that if you need to. It was a bit harder to remove the case than I thought it should be, but with some care and time it should pop off. The back has this metal cover plate held in by eight screws. There are two wires connected here in the middle for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth that you need to take off. Then we have to free the wires from the back by pulling up on this tape. You can pry it up with tweezers like I did, or you could just cut it and tape the wires back down when putting it back together. It's not really going to make a difference if you're in a hurry and don't care about how it looks. There's a hidden little screw right there. So that's fun. That's cool. You hide it underneath the... With those wires removed, the metal shield can come off. The one wire is still connecting the shield to the main body, and you can remove it if you want, but I just leave it attached because it's out of the way enough for what I'm going to do. The first thing you want to do now is disconnect the battery just for good safety reasons. Here you want to be especially careful. You don't want to poke the battery with anything sharp or cut any of the wires. Just try to apply even pressure to pull the white clip up and away from the board. It doesn't go any other direction, so don't pull down or to the side. Just lift it up. Maybe try a little leverage on one side and then the other until it comes free. There's a screw under this piece of tape holding the game slot and micro SD card reader assembly. There's a connector in the middle holding the assembly, so take care when you're Pulling that up, not to damage it. This is an important board, and it really just connects with that right there. So game slots here, as well as maybe your headphone jack, and then your SD card reader. So if you have any issues with those, you know, this is the board you want to want to take out. And yeah, just connects right there. You want to be very careful with that. Next, we can remove the heatsink. There are three screws holding it in place, and once they're removed, we can pry up the heatsink. Where it connects to the fan can be a bit stubborn, so just take your time again, because you don't want to bend this thin piece of copper. There we go. There we go. 
With that out of the way, we can come in and disconnect all the ribbon cables attached to the board. There are two for the Joy-Con rails, one for the fan, and one for the OLED screen that have these little tabs you have to pop back. Two, three, actually this one is on this side. There are three more screws holding the board to the screen and two around the USB-C connector. Now we can remove the cables using something soft so we don't damage any of them. We don't want to add any issues to an already damaged system. After that, we need to remove the speaker cables and those are very tedious to remove. You really need fine tipped tweezers for it because you want to avoid pulling on the cables as much as possible and there's just not a lot of plastic to grip. My advice is to actually pull out the motherboard at this point because it can come out and you can use a different angle to pull on the speaker cables. To get the board out, you just need to apply a little pressure on the bottom part of the case so you can slide the USB-C connector out of its slot. And there's the main processing unit of the Nintendo Switch OLED. It's pretty impressive for it to be so compact and yet be able to do so much. There's not much more you need to tear down from here. The fan's held in by two screws, so if it did need to be replaced, you can easily do that. The battery is glued in, but you can get it out if you need to to replace it. But I think this teardown is done and you can get to almost anything you need if you do need to replace something. I hope you learned something useful from it and that it made your teardown a little easier. Now if you want to see how I try to fix this no power OLED, I'll link the video in the corner once it's up. Thanks for watching.